Hey, I'm uh, Martin Pichelmeyer and I was talking here today at the symposium of the Coded Cultures event in the assembling things, uh, uh, to, in the theme of ex uh, assembling things. And what I was talking about was uh, more or less my personal history that brought me from producing media art pieces to producing computer games, which I'm occupied with nowadays. And um, uh, kind of the... Give an example from the media piece? Uh, example of media piece w pieces would be the Seven Mile Boots that I've done with Eric Berger and Laura Belloff, which were on show in various locations. And uh, they were uh, variable audio boots that you could put on and uh, walk around with, and they were talking to you. Well, people were talking to you through them, basically. Uh, and another example is the Bagatel Concrete, which is a pinball machine and modified that is here in the exhibition also. Um, uh, which is also a keyword, because pinball is a game, and I somehow more and more developed from producing device art pieces or highly technological pieces to producing game situations in, in either in, in, in performance environments or then later as, as game pieces like Bagatel Concrete. Do you think you lose the edge by being more playful? Do you lose your theoretical focus when doing things that are more fashionable maybe? Uh, yes, the depth of the piece is of course different if you produce a, 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 um, if you produce a consumer product like a game. But uh, game art per se is not less uh, uh, intellectual than any other uh, art, uh, media art, I would say. Uh, but it makes uh, uh, it, 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 it puts the, the tangible interactivity in front of everything else, and that's what, what's very interesting to me. So if I produce a game now, I also use a rich cultural context and uh, do a lot of research. But uh, at, uh, the, the, the interactivity and, and uh, actually with games, of course, the fun is always in front of it. So that's maybe the difference, just where you put the emphasis, uh, but not so much the. Uh, if you do research or if you have a theoretical aspect or not. Mm -hmm. yeah, could you describe the game you've done for the iPhone? Well, we, we are working on the second game now, which is very close to release, but I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, uh, the other game that we've done was a space music shoot 'em up uh, mashup between a music game and a space shooter. It's uh, completely anti-violent because it has no explosions uh, but uh, instead of uh, blowing things up you produce music by uh, yeah well we don't even have shots you just target enemies and they dissolve into music that's uh -huh. how I could put it um, in Austria there's a tendency to make a clear distinction between the critical or focused approach of art and the kind of the pure consumer products mm. aren't you afraid that having a background as an artist that the consumers will just demand that the game works well and is fun and they won't have any idea out of it? Well, uh, if you do a good work, then <laughs> it's not the question. Uh, on the other hand, I think I'm, I am. This, this distinction is is only made in in, in in very few areas of art. I mean, painters don't have to to uh, justify themselves for doing a beautiful painting. Uh, this, it, it's really it's, it's media art and it's performance art and it's maybe sometimes theater that has to fight this battle that we are uh, important because we are so critical. Uh, but that's not so much the case in other areas of art, which doesn't mean that I'm now a kind of digital painter. I, I just think it's, it's not necessary to, to, uh, have be, to, to produce art uh, that it has to be critical. It's, it's, it's uh, sometimes the right way to go and sometimes not. <laughs> what is your main uh, motivation if you approach a new project? What drives you? Uh, when I approach... Well, that's, that's actually the mode of working hasn't changed a bit. Uh, uh, what drives me is always a, s a generator idea. Sometimes something I, I experienced when I was a kid, like with this pinball machine, I decided when I was about seven that I want to produce a pinball machine and it took me well, uh, uh, 23 years to get there, <laughs> but <laughs> more than that actually. But um, uh, it somehow, so that I more or less wake up and have an, have an uh, idea out of anything and then I just start working and then it changes. It changes all the time until it reaches a point of saturation where it um, 
the, the, where I can grasp it and fixate it and perfect it and then and I can release it into the public and that's exactly the same with games as it with, uh, with any other creative product like art. So. Mm -hmm. Super. <laughs> Maybe just a, I'll stop here. But, um, could you explain the pinball machine? What's, what, how is it different to a normal pinball machine? Uh, with the pinball machines, we, we just exchanged everything that has to do with the game of pinball, like uh, everything that has to do with po points and uh, uh, competition with music. So you don't play for a score, you play for music. You don't play better than someone else, you just play louder than someone else, <laughs> or more intensive. So um, um, uh, normal pinball machines reflect uh, what you do on the playing field with uh, lights and, and um, a bit with sound and of course with points. Uh, we reflect it with music, so we more or less uh, change points for music and uh, the fun is uh, that you get your own personal soundtrack to your style of playing.